Awesome. Uh, thank you, everybody, for coming to my my uh, my presentation. I'm going to be talking about obesity and heart disease. Uh, I uh, pulled some census reports from um, the Rexburg area. Um, just kind of investigated Rexburg, got some information, did a windshield survey, went around the town, um, just kind of investigated some stuff. Saw like what really were the big problems in Rexburg. Um, so this is just, the biggest thing that I found was that uh, obesity and heart disease are uh, big issues here. Uh, can we go to the next slide, please? Thank you. Okay, so uh, like I said, I went through some census reports, um, kind of filtered through that and just found that um, most deaths in Madison County came from ischemic heart disease, um, also can, can be termed heart attacks. Uh, and other heart-related related problems. Um, also, 27.4% uh, of those living in Rexburg right now, um, via CDC 2019 survey, are obese, um, which is a huge indicator of heart disease. Um, it's a huge. It just it just leads to a multitude of problems. Not only is heart heart disease you know a problem here, but um, I didn't put it in. The presentation but uh, diabetes is also a huge issue here um, over 18 percent of people living in Rexburg have diabetes um, can we go to the next one okay cool so uh, what is ischemic heart disease um, it is a reduction of blood flow to the heart um, now I'm sure all of you understand but oxygen is necessary to be able to live um, so what happens is is when blood flow is cut off to the heart, um, oxygen is not getting to the necessary tissues within the heart, um, which leads to uh, cells dying, um, the heart kind of freaks out, um, and you have a heart attack, which really sucks. Um, <laughs> excuse my French. Uh, it's most common among the heart diseases uh, out there. Most people suffer from heart attacks. Uh, like I said, it's also called a heart attack. Um, and what it comes from is a buildup of plaque in the vessels um, from eating unhealthy normally. Uh, that's, that's the leading cause. Uh, eating unhealthily, being obese, those are the biggest, biggest causes of um, having a heart attack, is eating unhealthily, eating fast food, processed food, things like that. And we'll go over that later, hold on. Um, depression is also an issue, which I found pretty interesting. I don't really know like the causes of why depression is, but uh, looking it up online, depression was listed as one of the issues. Uh, alcohol consumption, um, like massive amounts of binge drinking, binge drinking over like a long amount of time, like years and years and years, can also lead to a heart attack. Uh, can we go to the next one? I just wanted to give you guys a good idea of what um, plaque buildup looks like. If you can look here, you see that this is like the normal diameter of a blood vessel. And all this is just fatty deposits. And it gives, um, you know, less space for the blood to be able to move through the vessel. Sometimes you can see these ridges and things like that. Um, blood vessels or blood will actually get caught in um, these little fatty deposits in these ridges here, and it'll cause a clot, which will also lead to a heart attack, um, which will stop blood flow to the necessary areas of the heart. You can also see here that this heart is covered in fatty deposits. It's all around these veins. You can see that there's a fatty deposit covering this vein. That's really bad. <laughs> It, it can lead to major heart problems. Can we go on to the next one? Okay, cool. Um, so just question yourself. Question yourself for risks related to heart attack. Do you drink, smoke a lot? Do you drink or smoke a lot? Um, are you obese or consider yourself overweight? Um, do you feel like you exercise enough? Uh, what does your diet consist of? Do you eat a lot of fast food? Do you um, eat a lot of processed food like TV dinners? Uh, do you have a history of heart problems in your family? That's, that's a big indicator of you know, whether or not you'll have heart problems later in life. Um, then you, do, you, do, it, sorry, do you drink an excess amount of energy drinks with caffeine? I just read recently that there was a 23 year old, um, this is just one case, but he would have an energy drink every day um, and he got admitted to the ER and had a heart attack because he just drank too much. Um, anyway, next slide. Thank you. Um, so how to prevent, uh, the first slide is eating healthily. You want to avoid foods high in saturated fats, which is like meat pies, 
sausages, fatty cuts of meat, um, you want to look for like lean meat. Um, when you look at your meat packages, you want to get the 93-7. Like it's 93% lean meat and it's 7% fat. Kind of stuff you want to use. Butter, um, butter's high in saturated fat. Ghee, ghee is also a butter substitute. Um, it's used in Indian food. Lard, everybody knows about lard. Cream, um, excessive amounts of cheese and cakes and biscuits. And I'm talking about like the box cakes and like the pre-made biscuits. Like homemade biscuits, a lot better for you depending on how you cook them. Um, but you also want to eat foods high in unsaturated fat like salmon and other like fresh fish. Like tuna, but not canned because that stuff's processed. Avocados, avocados are great with saturated fats. Uh, you want to eat nuts and seeds, not the processed kind, like with the, the sunflower seeds that have like the ranch flavoring, you want to avoid those. Uh, and olive oil, um, it's a good one. Okay, so you want to take a look at these labels. Um, you can see here, this is a pack of ramen. A lot of college kids eat ramen. You know, a lot of people just eat ramen because it's super easy to make. You see here, one fifth of your saturated fat is coming from this one package of ramen. Um, you also want to take a look at, you know, your your ingredients. Um, if you just look here, where was it? Disodium isonate. No idea what that is. No idea what disodium isonate. What is sodium alginate? Nobody out here in the audience knows. But like, see, that's the thing. Is like, if you can't pronounce it and you don't know what it is. Don't put it in your body because obviously it's not like it's not good for you. Like I wouldn't want to put this in my, my body because like I have no idea what disodium glutinate is. Guan guan elate? I don't even know how to say it. Anyway, next slide, please. Thank you. Um, okay, and then final slide. Um, you want to exercise. You want to eat healthy, like or not eat healthy, but uh, maintain a healthy weight. Um, on your next visit to your doctor, calculate your B have them help you calculate your BMI and see where your weight is as far as like your, your height and your weight um, and see if you fall within the healthy range. And if you don't, um, talk to your doctor uh, about things that you can do uh, to maintain a healthy weight. Um, stop smoking if you do. Um, another thing that you can do is walk everywhere. Walk at least for a half hour a day uh, outside or on a treadmill um, at least four to five times a week. Uh, run if you're physically able. Uh, get a gym membership. You can look up YouTube videos about working out, which will teach you how to do exercises. Um, you can even get a playlist put together to, to help you with working out. Um, there's also an app called Couch to 5K. Um, people who don't even know, like, who are just beginning at running. Um, like, if you if you're just starting to learn how to run, or just don't even don't even have a high tolerance for running, this will get you to running a 5K within nine weeks, and that's awesome. And I'll be around for uh, after the presentation, after questions are over to help people uh, with downloading this app if you're interested. Okay, can we go to the next slide? Okay, cool, thank you for attending my presentation. I appreciate it. Um, are there any questions that I could answer? Well, when you showed those statistics for Rexburg, did that include students or just permanent residents? I believe that it just included permanent residents. It wasn't uh, reflective on the college students living because they don't declare residency here. They declare residency back at home. These are the people that um, live here, like actually live here. Is BMI a good uh, standard to go by? Well, it all depends because uh, I'll be honest with you, it depends. Like, if you are a high, highly muscular man, like, Bryson over here, um, his BMI might be very high, you know, but because he's he's so muscular, he might have like a very high BMI, and it might say that he's obese or very unhealthy, but if you look at Bryson, he's just the epitome <laughs> of, of being healthy and being huge. So, it, BMI depends on, on, uh, on how you look, I guess. Like, I, I don't know, like you see here, I got a gut, my BMI is probably pretty high. I could stand to lose a couple of pounds, I know, but like it, it, it's more reflective of, I think it's more beneficial for those who don't really like, I think, lift. I think it's more beneficial for those who are like obese and need to lose some weight. It, it's a really good mapping tool for those who are, are obese, I think, honestly, or who are gaining weight, in my opinion. That's my opinion. I'm a student nurse. I haven't learned a lot, so I don't know. Go for it.
Earlier in your slides, you suggested to look at your labels. Yes. How much of some of those ingredients that we don't know is too good or too bad? So if you, like my rule of thumb is, is if you can't pronounce it, don't eat it. If you look at a kind bar, um, kind is like, you know, those nut bars. All those ingredients I can pronounce, so I eat them. Like I know it's like nuts, chocolate, you know, and it's like, you know, chocolate liquor and stuff like that. If I can pronounce it, I can read it, like I eat it. But liquor? stuff, but just stuff like disodium isonate, like I don't even know what the crap that is. Yeah. So it's like, if it's a chemical, I don't eat it, you know, like, yeah, disodium isonate, sodium alginate, like I don't even know what that is, so I don't eat it, you know, and, and that's kind of what I'm recommending here, like, you can't read it, you can't, you can't, you don't know what it is, don't eat it, it's bad for you, okay, okay, Jake? Uh, I have a question because every now and then I like to go and eat out, um, maybe at a fast food restaurant or uh, um, more of a fine dining restaurant. How, like, is that okay to do every now and then or is that, like, something that you would recommend to, to like, cut out completely? Great, great question. Um, I would not cut out eating out completely because you need stuff to do for date nights. <laughs> You need, you need stuff to do. And, and honestly, like once, once a week isn't gonna kill you. Uh, but if you're doing it like majority Americans are nowadays, like I was back when I was 342 pounds, you know, I was going like every freaking day. Like it, you gotta, it's everything in moderation, you know, everything in moderation. I feel like going out once a week would not kill you. Just don't do it all the time. <laughs> Great. Last question. Go ahead. What do you think is more helpful, the eating right or the working out? A combination of both. I think that that, that is the most important. 